Hi there, it's Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more worldwide TV interview. Um, Woman on TV. TV, IT247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple TV, and Comcast. So, uh, back without further ado, we had to have an, another, we're not doing a do over, but it's actually called a part two. So, out of Montreal, if I remember correctly, right, Howard Foreman? That's right. Because my brain is in many different places. <laughs> I see the guitar back there. We had a great interview with you, Jessica, and you and Jessica really connected, and I really enjoyed that, which was really, really good. Pleasure. And from New Jersey, the one and only, I'm calling her a superstar, Howard. She doesn't know that, but I call her a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline Foreman, the one and only. And then out of Tennessee, Jessica Heim. Jessica, what? What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Howard. And it says Glenn, but I'm, this is Madeline, right? Madeline. <laughs> All right. And we, just, and we just started, Jessica. We were waiting for you. I was telling we couldn't start really kind of without you. Well, I appreciate that. But I mean, Madeline's the, the guest of honor today. But thank you. I, I appreciate you waiting on me. <laughs> nice to meet you, Madeline. Thank you. <laughs> How are you just, today? I'm doing great. It's a, it's a beautiful sunny day, but the wind is crazy. It was blowing all night last night and blowing things over. We're having to kind of strap some stuff down. You know, what do you do? <laughs> just do what you have to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, and, how are things where you are? So far, good, good. Nice weather, a little rainy now, but we've had some beautiful weather in the past week or so. Nice. I and love Jess, fall. Get, Fall's my favorite season of the year. And Jess, you get to kick off the first question. Oh, well, thanks, Brian. I thought you'd never ask. So, Madeline, <laughs> I've got so, so many things to chat with you about. First of all, I have to tell you, thank you. Thank you for you and what you, what you provided us years after the fact. I love, love, love your album that Howard has made available online. And I am so curious how that came to be. I mean, I know, I know some of the story, but I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans. So if you would be so kind as to enlighten us as to how your recordings happened, what, what I'm even talking about, all the, all those things. Um, I just, I just want to hear the, the story from the horse's mouth. <laughs> okay, we can start if you want to go to the point where Howard got into it. Is um, uh, my husband and I sold our house about a half a year ago, mm -hmm. and I was cleaning up areas that I hadn't seen in a long time, and I came across these seventy eights, and they were from forty six and fifty three, and. Uh, I hadn't seen it for many, many years. And um, I called Glenn and I said, Glenn, you know, I found all these 78s and uh, we're cleaning up what to do with it. So he took them, listened to them. He called Howie. Howie said, send them to me, I'll take care of them. And that's what he did. Got this thing started. And this is where, why we are here because of Howie and his wonderful. <laughs> That's so my, great. It was it was my pleasure, and um, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I've worked extensively as a musician, but I've been kind of a studio urchin for many years. So, um, and I had been involved in some um, uh, record, uh, um, sort of rejuvenation and remastering of. Uh, antiquity uh, discs. So I had sort I sort of knew the, pro uh, the process and uh, I called a few people who um, put me on the right track and we found a, a great studio in California to make the transfers. So I, I, I just love that technology has come so far that we're able to do that kind of thing that we're actually able to preserve things that would normally not, you know, they wouldn't last forever. And at least this has become digital. So it'll be out there somewhere. That's for sure. Now it's <laughs> <Hopefully permanent>. forever. <laughs> so Madeline, how did you choose um, the, why did you choose the songs or how did you choose the songs that are on these 78s that you discovered that Howard uh, made available for us? 
I would imagine thinking back, they probably were very popular at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's probably why I recorded them because of course <laughs> I liked them. Well, I was, I was, I went through and listened to everything. I, uh, I love, I love music. I'm a, I'm a vocalist as well. And I love to sing and perform and it's just my passion. It's what I want to do forever. As long as I can, as long as God allows me. Right. And so I, uh, I was very curious about the songs and where they came from and um, looked up everything. And I thought, okay, well, maybe at that you were what, around 20 years old. How were, how old were you when you? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, 20 when I was 46 and then uh, uh, probably 27 at 53, if I figure it correctly, right. Okay, so I, at that time, I know that um, the Don't Take Your Love Away From Me, that possibly would have been a Lena Horn rendition. I'm curious if that might've been something or um, Can't Help Love In That Mind, that was by Helen Morgan originally and then done by lots of other people afterwards. So I thought maybe that, those people had been your influencers when you were, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, Oh no, 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 no. I was just asking if, if that, if those are the people that you kind of, I know Judy Garland and people I like that. Billie Holiday, Billie Holiday was great at the time. Mm -hmm. She sang all those type songs. You know? mm -hmm. And Lena Horne, she, she did a couple of the songs that I did also. And, um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I picked those songs. <laughs> I, I probably I never... some others as well, but you know, uh, I suppose the records all didn't last. Some were not good enough to uh, reproduce, but these were fine. These told the story. How about the the musicians that were there? I was, I think I'd mentioned this because we tried we tried this before. I'm so grateful to finally meet you because this has been a long time coming. Long time. <laughs> um, <we've been> <laughs> Thank but you. I mentioned to Howard before, I was um, even just, not just the songs themselves, but the atmosphere and the environment to what, how it was all captured, how, what, how much the recordings captured. So my mind started to create this image of, of the musicians and all the instruments and how people were, were in the room was it just kind of like a big party can you can you describe the the scene when you recorded those songs uh, i would say the some of the songs from 46 they were individual to me i went to a uh, recording studio and i recorded it but the ones in the 53 they were from my wedding i <laughs> sang at my wedding i can't believe i did that but <laughs> uh, I love to sing, and if you played the music, I sang. And uh, you know, at a wedding, you always have music, and you have somebody taking pictures or taking the recording things. So I had somebody record this ceremony, and also words from individual people to congratulate me. And the music was playing, so <laughs> gown and all. I just got up on the stage and I started to sing. Why not? As you should. Right, that was your day. Right, right. And I said, I encourage the people, join me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So that that made that that was the second part, the that, that year, you know, 53. Hmm. Great, great. And that's never I forgot about him for all those years. So it was great hearing him again. Oh yeah. I know that must have been just such a it's such a heartwarming story. It's very inspiring. And uh, it's it's hard not to get, especially for anybody that's that's in the entertainment industry or has been involved in music. It's kind of hard not to get a little emotional and get a little a little teary eyed in a good way, you know. It was good. And I, you know, I it's funny as I hear it now, I somehow feel like I'm singing it or <laughs> I can feel it. It was a very strange, but uh, nice. Jessica in, Jessica, in my mind, she was getting the party started. I can just see her getting <laughs> yes. involved. I can see her jumping up on stage and saying and singing, and everybody is jumping in. I, get, I can just see. <laughs> I think <of> it. <laughs> were you were you quite the firecracker? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, and that that's. Uh, What's the next question? Did I miss something? No. Oh, oh no, no. I just wanted to make sure that I don't ever, I don't want to cut cut you no. off or if you've got. No, it's fine. We're moving on, right? 
sure. Why not? The I'm curious also, I think the, I, uh, pardon me if I say this the wrong way yeah. or pronounce it. it. Do you say oi mame? That's how you say it, It's not mama or mommy, but it, mame. I don't, I can't think about that in, in the song. Oi, mm -hmm. oi, the song, Oi Mama. Yeah, Oi Mama. 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 Oh, Mama. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's probably the way I said it. Oh, Mama. <laughs> yes. And probably, you know, when you, you read it, when you see it in the sheet music where the you see it and they have the Yiddish under the English, it, I probably read it that way. Saw it that way, Mama. Yes. Okay, I, just, I know nothing. I know nothing about that, and I just I have, I'm very curious about that whole Yiddish song, songs and and where that came from for for you to end up singing this one as well. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Jessica, I was really I was in, really impressed for uh, Begin Begin because I had that in jazz band and I had to do that in, in orchestra, and it, for me it was kind of a. a it was for me. I wasn't in, uh, an easy piece to play as percussion, but you knew it was really good. So I can only imagine what it was to sing that. I loved it. It had a good range, and that's what I was looking for. Just keep singing whatever I could do. That was a good. <laughs> it was a probably an octave and a half at least, if not more. Oh yeah, that's not. That's a tough song. Yeah, that's right. not a. That's not an easy. Right, right, right. It's not an and easy tune. Yeah. Right, that's that's probably why I liked it. <laughs> because I could I could reach out the uh, the high range and I could do it, and I felt I could do it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yes, that's and uh, you know also Ella Fitzgerald also recorded it. You know that <laughs> she did, and I what I I had said this to Howard last time we spoke. I didn't realize that that was written. Uh, I'm a cruise, ship, cruise shipper was a cruise ship performer and singer and vocalist entertainer. And that song was actually written on one of the first cruise ships that, that ever sailed. Um, yeah. Isn't that interesting? And I, I thought, Ooh, this, I should, I should start singing this song now for one of my shows, just to call it back and say, this is where it started on the, on the open sea. <laughs> right. How long do you, do you know what, what year was done? Actually, yes, uh, 1935 on yeah. a Pacific cruise aboard Cunard when, when a Cunard was first getting started. That's interesting, mm -hmm. about 10 years earlier. That's good, very good. Yeah. Wow, we're first. I know, see, that's, it's like a wealth of information. Like your <laughs> album is. took me down this path. Like I went on a history, a music history lesson because of you, because of the music that, that you sang. Isn't that <laughs> nice? That's wonderful. Yeah. Very That's good. great. Very yeah, good. thank you. Very, very nice. <laughs> so Howard, you got this 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 treasure trove of albums. Your first reaction was what? Don't play them. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, you know, with with um, archival tapes and old discs, the um, the material that they're made of degrade over time. They, they're probably in good condition because they were kept in a box for so many years, probably in a place where it was kind of cool. Um, but um, I know from my own experience that, that um, working with archival tapes, <clears throat> the oxide uh, on the tape, like the, uh, the black and brown part, just kind of flakes off after a while. And um, the, the acetate records are really, really delicate. I mean, if you drop them, they will break. There's, there's, there's no way around it. But also they degrade every time you play them because the needle in the groove kind of digs the groove a little deeper. So, uh, so I just had them sent out to someone who uh, was a real expert uh, in this area. And he did a wonderful job in uh, transcribing them to digital. And now that they're digital, we don't have to worry about playing them. They can be played a jillion times. Yay. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, but also, I mean, uh, to your question, um, you know, when I heard the recordings because the engineer in California uh, uh, posted them on a cloud so I could hear them right away. Um, 
you know, a lot of people who uh, go through a period um, in their youth where, where they play music um, and it's not something for whatever reason they can't really follow it as a career. I think a lot of people wonder or think about, well, you know, was I really any good? And, and you know, could I have done this if, if uh, the situation had been different? The, the most uh, fun surprise for me was just how good the recordings were and how good uh, Madeline's performance was. So you have to understand, I, I never knew Madeline other than my cousin from New Jersey. I didn't, I, I didn't know she was a singer. Um, so it was a kind of a lucky accident that that's the profession, uh, music and recording is the profession that I went into and that so many years later, I could at least uh, uh, shepherd this project through. Um, and, uh, but certainly the, the nicest surprise was just how good it was. And then when I, just as, as a, um, as a curiosity to let people know, you know, what kind of projects I was working on. When I posted it, the response was really overwhelming. And from people who do work in the industry and many of them Grammy winners and Academy Award winners. So those kind of responses were very nice for me to be able to transfer to my cousins, uh, Glenn and Joe and Madeline. And, you know, in a way it's kind of like saying, See, you were really good. <laughs> it's yeah. Um, I, I well, first of all, I've anybody that I've that I perform with or family members or close friends, I've played this for them or sent them the link so that they can listen. And um, they've they've enjoyed it. Uh, they are also just are so congratulatory and in awe of your voice. I think you could easily you would you blend in with all the other artists all the recordings that you hear now from that era you absolutely just fit right in with them and I think that in and of itself is is pretty pretty crazy because not not many can do that <laughs> there's yeah. very very few that would just if, if I heard you I was hearing you singing with Frank Sinatra you know what I mean like when he sings with the Andrew sisters and and, and that's that style, it, your voice totally fits in with that. And I just, it's so great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Yes, you should Thank be you so, much. so proud and so happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. It really feels so good. Well, good, good, good. <laughs> Madeline, when you were not singing, were in the back of your mind, were you always just thinking, I might not be singing right now, but I have to keep my voice in shape. Were you ever thinking about that? Uh, keeping in shape is, if I sang and it came out good, that was keeping in shape. <laughs> <laughs> Stay there. Didn't, if, you know, if it's ready to leave, it's going to go. Yeah. It was absolutely a natural talent. So, but you weren't, were you ever able to take lessons or that just never came no, to fruition? It, no, it, no, no. In no. the days when I grew up, the, the money was uh, pretty scarce. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did what I did. And it, of course, I loved it and came out good. And I was happy for that. I made I'm everybody sad. smile. Yes. I smiled. I, I, I laughed too when I, I like, like in the wedding song when I sang, join me. It's fine. It made me feel so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. But you were also able to go out in that time, in that tough time during the World War and then after that, and to get a recording made wasn't easy, was it? No, I had to save my pennies. <laughs> Literally. I did, yes, I, I really did. And uh, counted them and then went down to this studio, this Hearst studio in, in Newark. I remember going there and making a record or two. Whatever I could afford, that's what I made. Wow. Yes. When you first walked into that studio, because I know what it's like to walk into a studio. Jessica knows what it's like to walk into a studio. But when you walked in at that time, what was that feeling like for you? You know, honestly, I, I, I can't remember. I, I just remember standing in, the, in front of a mic and singing and somebody alongside 
directing the music. I, I don't remember, I really don't, but I, was, I knew that I was making a record. That was for sure. And I had one when I left, that was for sure. That was <laughs> funny. Couldn't remember, no. Jessica, was she in a zone then, you think? In a zone? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, when you're, especially for the first time, it's just, you you dream about it, you think about it, and then all of a sudden you're there and you're going, well, this is, this is me, I have to, okay, how does this work, you know? I mean, there's so many things, other than getting there and being prepared to do, to sing whatever you're gonna sing, there's so many other factors going on, you know? And where to stand, how does it work? Who do you talk to? What's this thing? Where do I, you know? <laughs> So there's, there's so many details. It's hard to take it all in. You're just trying to, you know, be on top of all of it. So yeah. I'm sure she was in a zone. I know I get in a zone. <laughs> Even now I still get in a zone. <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So you said, so everybody was in the same room then. It was um, you and there was a, a conductor or how, how was it set up? Or do you remember that? Yes, I, 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 no, I don't remember, believe it or not. Okay. I, well, if I stopped to think now, how would I have felt then? I probably was so happy to be there. Uh, I didn't look around like I might have today. I just did what I had to do, what I went to, to do. And that was the good part. Right. <laughs> yes, it, that, it, it, that's it. I, I, you know, come and get out with what you go in for. That's the best part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how many times then was our, is what we are able, are what we are able to listen to, is that um, two, just two separate recordings or is it three or how, I know it's the wedding and then, and then the other there, there, one. There two, two. There it two, is the two. two. Yeah, just okay. two, yes. Okay. Yes. And man, that's something else just to think about is you covered a lot of ground in one day <laughs> that, <laughs> That's not easy either. People, right, people don't record that many songs at one time nowadays. No way. They can't <laughs> handle it. They can't. <laughs> no. So you're, you're a champion. You're, you're I'm a singer hero star for, back then. You're a vocal know hero. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wow. Well, we, well, we, <laughs> yes. Didn't realize it, but that's the way it was. We yeah. got in whatever we could the most in the least amount of time. Yeah. Well, you sure did knock it out. Congratulations on that, too. Exactly. That's a feat in itself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't even, that just dawned on me because it takes forever to do one song. Like, it'll take a week or two or three, depending on money and time and who's involved and or months if you got the dough. <laughs> in those days, there was, in the mid-40s, certainly, there was no such thing as multi-track recording. Right, right. So it was recording a performance. So if you yeah, were there with a a pianist and an upright bass player and a microphone. You simply did the tune from beginning to end. If someone made a mistake, you stopped, that take was discarded and you started again. So uh, for me, one of the most exciting things about listening to recordings like that is they're, they're a real snapshot of time. It's everything that was going on in those two or three minutes, 75 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and no smoke and mirrors. And if and also too, what I what I like is there's in in that time you can hear people that either say the wrong word. I mean, there are there are lyrics that first of all, Dean Martin, he likes to sing whatever he wants to sing anyway. So there's a lot of recordings where he's just making up lyrics that don't actually fit in the song, but who cares? It's Dean Martin. And then even Judy Garland had a recording. Ah, I can't think of the song right now, but she totally flips the words. Who cares? It's Judy Garland. Like, but it's it was never fixed, right? Because they probably didn't have the time, or they couldn't they couldn't go back and just start the song over from from the beginning, um, or chose not to. There was a um, I was watching a documentary last night, or it was on TV while I was working on some other stuff about uh, Hank Lachlan, one of the country music folks from a long, long time ago, and they were showing him in the studio and the fact that they just brought in. Um, musicians and they all just went for it that's what you did you just walked in and like you said Howard it's it's a snapshot in time and it's so cool just to just to see that and see how things used to be and it really makes you appreciate just the organic natural way that everything was presented back then and it kind of makes me wish that we had that a little bit more now <laughs> 
But that, that's why we have live music. Yay! Exactly. <laughs> So um, Howard and Madeline, give the website so people can go on it for people who haven't heard your recordings yet. Oh, for sure. It's MadelineForman.com, M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E-F-O-R-M-A-N.com. And uh, our, the last interview we did with you, Brian, is uh, on that site as well. And um, all of Madeline's recordings, and they're, they're all free to download. Don't you feel so official, Madeline? You have your own .com. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I don't, I don't even have one. You should feel good about that. Yeah, I, I don't either. I don't either. .com <laughs> <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> Are you? Or do you think you're singing a little bit more too, just around the house when you're walking around? No, not too much. No, you don't, I, you don't I, sing in the shower. <laughs> I never did, <laughs> but I put the music on. I get up in the morning. I hear my songs. Starts my day. I uh -huh. look back and, you know, it's a long time ago. I say, wow. <laughs> and every time I, I, hear, good, I hear something different, I, I listen for something different. Some, it's unusual. I find it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Madeline, are there are there artists, are there contemporary if you're considering maybe Frank Sinatra, I if I I love the way he would just tell a story. He's he's singing to you, but it's a story. And uh I loved uh, Ella Fitzgerald. She had a, a, a voice like, uh, like an instrument. And, and that's the great, best part of her with her scat, unreal. And believe it or not, I love Judy Garland. She had a presence, a stage presence that nobody had. She could sort of, like you said before, she can get out of anything, any mistake or whatever, whatever she was doing. I, I just love them. They were, they were pretty good. And they were, they're contemporary. They were wonderful. They were wonderful, I thought. And, um, and uh, Billie Holiday, you know, she, she, I, you could hear and understand every word that she said, as she <laughs> said it in her, in her uh, recordings. So that, I don't mind playing the same thing over and over and over again. It, I never get tired of something I like. Me neither. That's, that's yeah. Me either. Yeah. I do it every day myself too. That's good. great. That's great. You, you don't get tired. You just get a big repertoire. You have a, a big, big library of, of all the things that you love and you stay with mm -hmm. it. Today is Monday. Well, let's see. I'm going to explode on Monday. Or, or, you know, and uh, it's the way it is. It was a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm even starting to listen to Jessica now. Yeah, too. I tried to. You, you think it's funny to listen to me? No, no, <laughs> I said uh, no, no. I'm starting to listen to Jessica now, also. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Very well. Sweet. The Very nice. the most exciting thing recently is uh, there's a caroling. I became a part of a, a caroling group called the Good Time Carolers, by the way, everyone. This is a little, little drop. The Good Time Caroling Production Company, or Good Time Productions out of LA, but we have caroling companies in Nashville and Dallas, LA, San Diego. I might have made that up. Um, but they're, oh, New York City. And uh, we're going to start the season off um, at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel and Resort. And we'll be singing every night until... Uh, the new year it's a lot but there's a group of us so thankfully i won't be singing every night because i don't think you could do it madeline you could probably sing every night and your voice would be perfect but mine doesn't last <laughs> 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 mine wouldn't last like that so <laughs> so we do have a rotation but i've had to learn so many songs so that's kind of where i've been at howard since the last time that we we chatted it's been i've been in a christmas holiday season music land and talk about 
learning and telling stories and just being able to communicate and identify. It's all acapella too. So we don't have any any kind of music to rely on. It's just each other. So you really got to wow. hone in, hone in on the, on the notes. Um, but it's not, it, I'm sorry. I said, isn't that nice? Oh, it's, it's been amazing so far. We haven't had our first show yet. It's just been rehearsals, but uh, it's been really great. And actually talking about instrumentation and music versus acapella, Howard mentioned um, when you said that when you did the recordings, it was just, it was just bass and percussion and piano, right? Did you have any, were there any other? I, I can't remember any. People in there? Um, because that's my favorite setup. I, the the more natural and just kind of um, not naked, but you know it's it's everything is is available and you can hear it. There's not it's not covered by a lot of effects and all that stuff. Just a voice, piano, a good bass, a little bit of percussion. That is my favorite group anyway. So you even that you nailed that, Madeline. <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. wish we knew. I wish we knew who the players were both the piano player and the bass player were excellent by by anyone's standards they were good musicians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you for blessing us with with your music it's been it just has been a pure joy really appreciate exactly. it exactly yeah absolutely hey howard talk about your um give you a website really quickly oh it's uh groovekings.ca g-r-o-o-v-e kings.ca and uh, there's lots of music and video there it's my personal project that I do with a, a terrific Canadian singer named Irene Mark she's wonderful she's a, a fabulous uh, soul singer um, and uh, check it out but we're here to talk about Madeline <laughs> And Madeline, do you have anything, anything for those new and expiring singers, performers? What, what kind of guidance would you give to them? What would you say to them that you went through at an early age when you stopped, but you never lost your voice, which is very interesting. What would you say? Never give up. Pursue your late dreams. And if you have a problem, so what? Life is not without problems. Yeah. Just dust yourself off and pick yourself up and keep going. Mm -hmm. Never give up. Amen. <laughs> All right, here, Jessica, here. you get to you get the final word of of what you're uh, what you're promoting your YouTube and your social media links. Well, okay, so I'll do that, but I don't want to get the final word. Madeline gives the final word. Um, but I uh, am Jessica Heim on Facebook, Jessica Heim7 on Instagram, and on YouTube, it's notes for the number four life, all one word. And um, in true Madeline fashion, I think she's got the ones, one that has notes for life, literally. Yeah. <laughs> both, both in wisdom and music. <laughs> Exactly. And uh, yeah, Madeline, thank you so much. Thank you for, for um, chatting with us and, and sharing your, your talent and your story with us. Um, the world would be missing something great if, if we were not introduced to that. So many, many thanks. Thank you so much. You're wonderful. You're <laughs> wonderful. You, I just love everything you said. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, enjoy the rest of everything, whatever you're doing, and do it well and enjoy it all. Hey, and thank I want to thank you thank for you that. Best. Thank you again. <laughs> yeah. And Howard, thank you for what you're doing and putting everybody together. Obviously, it couldn't have been done without you and Glenn on doing that. And next time we talk to you, I want to see how many downloads she's had because. Okay, I'm going to check that out for you. On our Amazon Music and our Pandora Spotify on our end. Cool. Okay. And Jessica. Superstar. Well, yes, yeah, she's a superstar, <laughs> isn't she? <laughs> so with that, I want to thank everybody. This is Movie Reviews and More, Worldwide TV Network, WomenOnTV.TV, iTube247, 
out of Franklin, Tennessee, and now iHeart and Pandora, Amazon Music, Apple TV, uh, Comcast. And hey, if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs them. And we will see you next week.